Thank you so much for tuning in today. You are listening to Society Bites Radio. My name is Jillian Beth, and I am an intuitive healer and coach on a mission to empower women by reconnecting them to their inner wisdom. I'm so grateful to have you all here with us today, and I'm really excited to have the awesome Kiara back with us. If you missed last week's show, you definitely want to check it out because we had a really cool conversation on animal minds, emotion, and the communication she can do with them. She shared some great stories. So do check that out if you missed it. In this week's show, we're going to be talking about transformation through truth and a little bit about Kiara. She is a seeker, a learner, researcher, clinical hypnotherapist, certified nutritional consultant, animal communicator, trauma and life transitions advisor. She has studied many modalities and offers an eclectic approach in her practice. She believes the process of becoming is far from an easy path, and yet it is one that is deeply rooted in the human experience. She merges the intuitive and scientific sides, and her goal is to bridge that support and understanding of self whilst grounding in the best practice. She supports her clients through life-changing events by reconnecting them to their soul essence. She calls this transformation through truth, which is what we're going to talk about today. And her clients experience significant change that is tangible and is reflected in their daily lives and relationships. Her clients have have dubbed her office as the sanctuary, a safe container that allows them to rebuild and reconnect to their inner lives through trust. So welcome back, Kiara. Oh, hi. Thanks, Jillian. Yes, I'm definitely looking forward to this conversation. A bit of a a flip from the last one we have, but I... I wanted to do this because what I've learned through the very short time that I've known you, you have a lot of different modalities, as many people have heard in the um, bio that I just read about you. And I want to be able to shine a light on just at least a few of the different aspects that you really enjoy. So um, one thing that we well, the the main topic of the show today, transformation through truth, I believe will be a pretty powerful conversation. And I'm wondering if we could start this off with how you view life transitions as far as being able to set a person free. Like why is a transition the, um, I sometimes look at it as almost like a pivot point or a jumping off point. How can they actually set someone free? This is, this is a very good question, Jillian, because, you know, life is full of transitions. If we look from birth itself is a transition. Mm-hmm. It's a transition from the nurturance of the womb, the warmth, the, um, the tightness of it. So you're being swaddled, basically, and listening to your mother's voice, listening through a muffled, um, basically, a body. You're listening via your mom's body, you're experiencing via her and the first experiences. And as we go through life, um, there are many moments and times that are transitional in nature. And the thing with transitions is sometimes we get stuck. Mm -hmm. And those ones are the ones where we haven't quite understood them at the level of development where we're at cognitively. So a two-year-old cannot understand an adult joke, for example, Um, but it might be obvious to an adult, but a child doesn't have the capacity as yet. So with life transitions, going back and reframing it in a way that can be understood at that point in time, because often it gets stuck or frozen. And that's the beginning of becoming unstuck and moving through time and space to understand and find meaning in that transition or experience. Mm, I like how you said that. It's like the the awareness is the first part, right? Being aware that this, yeah, this thing, um, whether it was a traumatic event or whatever, this, this thing happened, this moment in time and becoming aware of perhaps how um, significant that played 
on your life's path can allow you to change the lens at which you look through it. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And I mean, when, when I, I see my clients, we, I talk to them about the three treasures and awareness is actually the first treasure. Mm. The second one is reflection. So reflecting upon that to see, you know, what archetypes am I coming from and archetypes being either mythological or symbolic or types of metaphors that we relate to based on our belief system. Mm -hmm. And then the third treasure is beginning to dislodge that looking through the false self to the actual self um, and going through that whole process. It's, it's a real transform, transforming process and finding your actual self is where your own truth lies. It, it, it's, it's beautiful. Again, it's sacred. Uh, it's a very sacred practice. And, you know, cultivating trust is really, it comes down to our experiences as well. How much can we trust that external reality is going to be there for me? That what is out here in front of me, looking at the outward, is going to be there for me when I need it. And that comes down to our experiences often in childhood, you know, and at that level of development, how were those foundational piece, pieces laid? So um, that's a lot of the time where we start. And it's not always the case. And a lot of the time there are also um, experiences in adulthood that that's, are the same. But really because of the cognitive difference between finding meaning in something, mm. as a child, everything's literal. Yeah. So as we grow up, we, we begin to have more of a symbolic mind and have more of an understanding um, right uh, until the end of our last breath is, is my idea. I'm always learning. I never know absolutely everything. So um, we're always learning uh, as we go along in this life. Mm. And do you find often in working with people, sometimes it's also the unlearning that we need to do? Oh, yes. Um, there is a lot of of what uh, Krishnamurti would suggest, Freedom from the Known. It's my favorite book. Ooh. And uh, every time, it's a very small book, but every time I read it, I always find new things because I'm coming from a different part of who I am. So it's the unlearning. And also, Julian, it's about giving ourselves permission to look mm. and to allow ourselves to see things oh that doesn't mean it has to be this way it can be done yes. this way and I think that's what I find a lot of people they'll say yeah I didn't know I could do that and I said well what do you think about that and they're happy because it's setting them free yes. in that sense mm. and you know the the other really important thing I think to note about that is that this can happen at any time. So yes, we've all been through traumas and different life experiences to, to varying degrees. And sometimes the, the degree or depth of the experience or trauma we, we label um, could potentially be different even if the exact same thing happened to you know multiple people. But yes. the important thing to know is that we always have that opportunity to see a different path or to see it in a different light or from a different perspective. And what I often say is, you know, choose again. And every moment we get to choose again. Me and too. yeah, so having that ability to show up and even inquire uh, with someone like, like yourself that there is something else out there and a, a different way of looking at the transformation through a different lens of truth, because isn't, isn't it the truth, no matter which way we look at it, if it's what we take on? Um, yes, so, it, it is. Yeah. So ha having the wherewithal to be aware of it, like we spoke about it earlier and show up and, and ask for help or guidance or support if that is a desire of yours, I think the best investment we can make is in ourselves and having that curiosity and, and as you say, nurturing the safety and cultivating the trust and, and reconnecting is incredibly important while we're here. 
And, you know, what brings to mind as we're talking is as we go through this process of nurturing the safety, cultivating trust, reconnecting and reframing, Mm. we do build more curiosity and playfulness. And when we build curiosity and playfulness, now we're able to recreate what we would like in a different way. Because if we look at nature, nature is, is, is such a teacher on so many levels. Yes. There is always play. Kittens will play, whether it's a bobcat kitten, whether it's a cougar kitten, mm-hmm. um, a wolf kitten, well, wolf cubs, rather, um, or pups. Um, they, will, they will play. And so there is... There is something to learning with play, and we learn much more in children. There's research to show that learning through play as a child is a key component of the development of the brain, but it's also development of experience. So being able to recultivate that inner child view so that you can come from a reframing, that is a key process with transformation and life transitions I've found. Mm. And if, if that is the truth, which is absolutely what I believe as well, and if change is inevitable, how could someone assure themselves in a way to not feel like they're walking it alone? Very good question. In fact, that's what I that's what I use in my practice. Being human means that we're not alone. It's the idea of separation, and it, it does happen the first time when we are born. We're separated from our mothers that have surrounded us, literally, like I said at the beginning mm-hmm. of the conversation. But what I've noticed and what people have said to people when they come to me is that, let me tell you, you're not alone. A lot of the experiences and events might be different, but the, the essence of it Generally, the the idea of not being good enough, for example, um, it is felt by everybody on some level in the way that is expressed in their uniqueness. Mm -hmm. So essentially, we're not alone. And at the same time, coming to the sanctuary, like my clients have have called my office and the space and feeling, re-feeling that nurturing safety it brings everything into perspective and being able to actually breathe. And it's with the out breath, knowing that oh, I'm not, I can do this. I have somebody supporting me. I have somebody who's been th- through it before. I have had somebody who's ha- had life transitions themselves. So being real um, and being real with each other and in this practice really allows the transformation through their own truth and meander their path um, while somebody is is walking with them. And so they're not alone. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought up that example because something that I I doubt we talked about in the short time we we've known each other and I'm not even sure if I've ever shared this on the show before, but um, I very much have had and and still live to some degree in that I am not good enough um, energy because as a baby and you talk about the womb and being, you know, connected to the mother, I was given up for adoption and so my story had always been, but in a way, like I'm, my trauma is special in that way, right? Like I experienced that. And, and what I'm hearing from what you're saying is in one, I know it was a way for me to differentiate myself or feel unique or like, 